Have you heard of the Crimson Sunset? You know, the town of the man-eating well. I grew up one town over and would often visit for the huge two-day festival they held. It was only pleasant for outsiders anyway. The townsfolk themselves were constantly on edge until the clear sunset came to pass. The best part is watching the water in the well change. As the sun is setting the first night, the water in the well reflects the sun almost luminously. It glows as bright as the sky does. A wash of pinks and oranges, the most romantic sunset imaginable, but in the water of the well. However, as the sun falls behind the horizon, the water in the well would wash these beautiful colors together until they became a dark, bloody crimson. It was calling for a sacrifice. It took years for the town folk to figure that out, though. They saw the crimson water slowly drain as long as it was red and panicked. They endured famines and droughts and all the horrible side effects of a town dying of thirst until one year someone hung themselves in the well to measure the exact rate at which the water levels lowered. The rope broke. Or he let go. Or maybe someone pushed him. Regardless, he fell in, and with the splashes his body made, the water slowly rose back to its original level. That's when the holiday started. The festivities had been going on for decades before me. I couldn't even guess when that person must have fallen. But his misfortune resulted in a nice two-day holiday for the rest of the town for years to come. The town had that day off, and the next day, when the sunset would once again reflect brilliantly in the water of the well. But as the sun fell past the trees, the water would turn clear again. There was a breakfast the first day, where all the town would sit in the meeting hall and eat. The mayor would pull a name at random, or it's supposed to be random. I'm sure the mayor put his own name back on multiple occasions. I digress. He pulls a name, and it's this person's duty to ensure a body is fed to the well. It doesn't have to be their own. Oh no. This is why they pull before the crimson sunset. Gives the person a chance to get someone else in the water. If they fail to do so, just before the clear sunset, they're forced in. The festivities obviously were only set up as distractions. A theater guy's name got pulled, so he set up a whole play to distract the crowd. Got the whole troop in on it. They must have known how scary it was, and gladly took up the chance to be the distraction in lieu of the victim. So performances and plays were put on. Same goes for music. A violinist's name was pulled, so she played music close to the well. And when a crowd gathered, she kicked someone in. Of course this was suspicious so everyone kept up their distractions. It was better to be the person diverting the attention anyway. Even a nobody could use the help, so it kept these talented people in the clear for being unlucky victims. Over time, it resulted in the brightest two-day celebration of sacrifice I'd ever had the fortune to visit. Of course, it brought outside attention, and the town ate it up. Stalls were set up as tourist traps, stupid memorabilia, games, food, and so much more. One year there was a petting zoo, <laughs> but only one year. Whoever got picked that day ran through the animals, picking them all up and throwing them into the well. But the water kept going down. It wanted a human, but this guy was so desperate and deranged he kept throwing the animals in insisting that enough of them would even out to a human eventually. They forced him in early that year, and never had a petting zoo again. We moved away the year after someone shoved in my neighbor, someone else visiting from out of town. I guess we all visited thinking ourselves immune to the town's curse, since we were from the outside. But no. Humans are still humans, after all. I wonder if the festivities continue. I haven't been there in at least ten years. 
I'll take you there sometime. Just you and me. To the crimson well.